Okay, so as you might have realized by this point in the class that every time we solve a problem, we generate a new problem. So that's great for problem sets, it's great for exams, but it sucks for students. So when last we left vesicle trafficking, we had this issue of on the cis Golgi, we had done membrane fusion, but we had these these V-snare, T-snare complexes because vesicle fusion had been spontaneous. The snares had engaged with each other and formed a tight complex. So fusion had been spontaneous, but what that means is if this were to allow, keep going, that all the T-snares would be consumed every time, you would eventually, all the vesicle fusion events would consume all the T-snares on the Golgi. And we'd eventually run out of T-snares to allow fusion to occur and the system would grind to a halt. So we need to do two things. We need to free, free the T-snares and recycle the V-snares. Now this first part is pretty obvious because as I said, if you consume all the T-snares and they get stuck irreversibly in these complexes, eventually membrane fusion comes to an end. The second part is a little less obvious because if we free these T-snare, V-snare complexes from each other, if we unwind these complexes, now the Cis-Golgi is coated with T-snares, which is fine, but it also has the V-snares. So this is a solution to an identity crisis. The idea being that if this, if this were, if you just unwind these things, the cis Golgi wouldn't know, is it a target compartment or is it the vesicular compartment? And eventually these things would build up and its ability to, it would start becoming much more promiscuous and interacting with a wide variety of things and it would be a complete disaster. So what we need is when we unwind these complexes and free the T-snare, we need a mechanism to go back, capture these V-snares and send them back to the ER so that the ER knows it's the ER and the Cisgolgi remains the Cisgolgi, that you keep these molecular tags separate from each other. So as I said, the key thing in all of this is that we have, uh, that the assembly of the V and T snare complexes was spontaneous. As I mentioned previously, assembly is almost always spontaneous and you use energy to take things apart. So since this was spontaneous, we know that there's gonna be an energy utilizing machine that's gonna break these things apart and free the T-snares from this complex. So how is that done? So let's just draw it out here. We've got the Cisgolgi. And what we wanna do is unwind these complexes. So, and this is also a general principle, it's not as universal, but what you often find is that there's a general machine that uses ATP or energy to do something, and you have a whole slew of different adapter molecules that adapt that common purpose machine to specific targets. So in this case, that principle, this is a perfect example of that kind of, of idea in that what you have is a set of proteins called snares. I mean, snaps. So these are adapter molecules, adapter proteins. They recognize different V-snare, T-snare complexes and bind to them. And they act as an interface for a giant molecular machine <laughs> 
called NSF. So what NSF does is once it's engaged with the V-snare, T-snare complex through this snap, it uses ATP hydrolysis to break this thing apart, just like, you know, just like you would bend the bars on a, on a cage if you were like at uh, Toontown at Disneyland, those rubber bars. That's probably the worst possible analogy. But since there's no class here to groan at my bad uh, humor, I will just continue monologuing. So it takes ATP, converts it to ADP, that's NSF, and it uses that energy to unwind those complexes. And what you end up with is the Cis-Golgi coated with these V-snare, T-snare complexes. Well, they're no longer complexes, they're broken apart. And so now perhaps you see the problem is that You've got the target snares just as you would want on the Cisgolgi, but now you have these V snares. And so this could create all sorts of havoc in terms of which membranes start fusing with other membranes. So what we need is a mechanism to capture these guys. So we need to capture the V snares. and return them to the ER. And so this is this idea of recycling. And it's a really big concept in terms of how things move between the ER and the Golgi, because it's not just a problem with these V snares, it's a problem with a lot of other things. And so I'll be walking you through that next. I've justified the need for a recycling pathway based on the fact that you're generating these V-snares with every time you deliver an, a COP2 vesicle to the Cisgolgi. But I also want to kind of motivate it because it's a big concept in how ER to Golgi trafficking works in terms of how do things know to stay in the ER? How do proteins such as BIP or specific chaperones or all those glycosylation factors, how does the biochemistry that's specific to the ER stay in the ER? Why doesn't any of it end up moving through the COP2 vesicles into the Golgi? Why doesn't things spread? Why do, how do you prevent a leak? Because the concentrations of all of these proteins in the ER are incredibly high. So what I want to do is kind of walk you through some of the concepts of everything we've seen so far. So here we are at the ER. And we've already talked about the translocation channel. The ribosome, the RNA, secreting proteins in that then fold in the ER, right? Now, when we've been talking about these things, generally I've been using examples such as insulin, things that people are kind of generally familiar with just from popular culture or from their knowledge of medicine. But there's a whole set of proteins that have to stay in the ER, designated as square proteins because they're boring, they don't move anywhere. So these are ER resident proteins. So as I said, we want to make sure that these proteins stay in the ER. So the proteins that are responsible for N-linked glycosylation, the reason we can say that that's specific to the ER is because these proteins don't move through the secretory pathway. They stay here. And so this is a big problem because as you build up these proteins, if you then decide to, if you begin making a COP2 vesicle, so you start butting it off, Right? So you have the COP2 coat. You may pull in the proteins you want to secrete. Let me just make sure this is clear. This is secreted. But you may also, just because there's so much of this protein in the ER, 
capture some of the proteins that are supposed to stay in the yard. So there's essentially some sort of leak. And so this becomes a problem because the protein concentrations are so high that when the vesicle forms, these vesicles keep getting bigger and bigger every time I draw them, uncoats. and eventually dumps its contents into the cis Golgi. I'm not going to finish that, but... Right? So we already talked about that this required we had This ended up having, let me just put it on here, the V snares. So the V snares end up on the on the Golgi, but we also had the T snares. So we unwound those. So this is great, but now we've got to bring these back. Otherwise, the Golgi starts getting confused whether it's a vesicle or a membrane compartment. But we also have this ER resonant proteins here that we also want to bring back. So we've got two sets of proteins that we want to bring back. These snares, which are just a product of this ER to Golgi trafficking, but any sort of leak protein. So what we need is some sort of pathway to create a vesicle here and send it back to the ER. So we want to capture these proteins and the V snares, put them in a vesicle, send them back. And so we need some sort of recycling pathway. And so those of you who've been paying super close attention <laughs> will have noticed that the first pathway we've talked about is COP2. So you can imagine that the recycling pathway occurs via vesicles that are COP1. So just this is another one of those beautiful things in science where the people who discovered COP1 vesicles thought they were purifying this pathway but actually end up identifying the complete backwards pathway. So, so what are the issues that are being addressed here? One, cargo selection for COP2 isn't perfect. And two, we have V snares need to be recovered. So as a result, what we need is this second pathway that completes the cycle. So you have COP2 going ER to Golgi. So let's just make that clear. So this is ER to Golgi. But then we have a reverse pathway going Golgi to ER. So you'll often see different terms for this. So this is called anterior grade. That means moving forward, and this is often called retrograde. And so what I'll do in the next screencast is start walking through all the molecular machinery that allows these different vesicle systems to identify something that has escaped the ER and needs to be recovered and dragged back.